everyone, I'm Donna Louise and welcome to my YouTube channel for the love of puzzles. Today we continue our journey as we travel around art, the current largest commercially available jigsaw puzzle in the world from Graphica. If you haven't seen the other videos that I've released in this series, I'll leave all the links in the description below. I suggest you at least watch the unboxing video just to get an overview of the jigsaw puzzle itself. Now, I still don't have my big beautiful map in my background, so very boring plain white background, sorry about that. But I just finished filming the previous video, so I decided to leave that section of the puzzle up on the table. So that was uh, bag 9, section 21. Today we're starting with bag 10, section 12. Look at this section. This section worries me. So much background. This painting right here, I think it's a Da Vinci. So complicated, beautiful, but complicated. This frame, I have a feeling this is gonna take me 18 hours. I'm just gonna put it out there. I think about 18. This section here took me 10 hours and 42 minutes. So I'm thinking this will take me seven to eight hours longer. What do you think? I'm up for the challenge though, I'll get it done. But yeah, so many background pieces. And I know there's detail on a lot of them, so I hope that helps. But after a while, I find my eyes just, everything looks the same, you know? Shades of light white to beige to darker beige to brown, it just all kind of blends in. This will be bag number 10. So if we pull out my panoramic poster here, Trying not to get too much glare from that lovely spring sun that we have outside. I've completed now the first panel of three sections, the second panel of three sections. On the table right now, you see this bottom section of the third panel, and now we're moving up to the middle. I've also, on the other end of the puzzle, completed two bookshelf sections. After this one, I'll do the top, which is another single, just one painting, and then I'll go back and do another bookshelf section. I really enjoy those bookshelf sections, but I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little worried about this. I, I think this is gonna be the hardest section of the entire jigsaw puzzle. When I look at every section that I have remaining, I think this one's gonna be up there. I could be wrong, fingers crossed, let's hope. I'm up for the challenge, like I said, so let's just jump right in. For the love of puzzles, let's get working on bag number 10, section 12, as we travel around art. There are three paintings in this section of the puzzle. The first is called The Great Wave of Kanagawa by Katsushika Hokusai. I should elaborate that it is actually a woodblock print, believed to have done from like 1820 to 1831, during the Edo period of Japanese history. It's approximately 25 by 37 centimeters in size. Now, Hokusai was a ukiyo-e artist. Again, lots of Japanese words and names here. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing them. Now, ukiyo-e is a Japanese printmaking technique which flourished in the 17th to 19th centuries. The term itself translates to picture or pictures of the floating world. This print depicts three boats moving through a storm-tossed sea with a large wave forming a spiral in the center and you can see Mount Fuji is visible in the background. You can also see the title of the series written in the upper left corner within a rectangular frame and his signature is next to that. The print is Hokusai's best known work and the first in his series entitled 36 Views of Mount Fuji in which the use of Prussian blue revolutionized Japanese prints. Now, I must admit, I absolutely love the blue and the vibrancy in this work. The composition of The Great Wave is a synthesis of traditional Japanese prints and Western perspective, and it earned him immediately success in Japan and later in Europe. It actually inspired many of the Impressionist painters, some of which we've already seen in this jigsaw puzzle. Several museums throughout the world hold copies and prints of the Great Wave, many of which came from 19th century private collections of Japanese prints. For example, you'd be able to see it at the Metrop Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York, the British Museum, and the Tokyo National Museum. Now, the Great Wave of Kanagawa, Kanagawa, 
I believe that's how it's pronounced. It's been described as being a contender for the most famous artwork in Japanese history. It influenced several notable artists, like I mentioned, like Van Gogh and Claude Monet, but also musicians like Claude Debussy. The second painting in this section of the puzzle is by the Dutch painter Johannes Vermeer and it's titled The Art of Painting. It's believed to have been done from 1666 to 1668. Now there's actually other names under which it's known. The Allegory of Painting and Painter in His Studio. It's owned by the Austrian Republic and it's on display in the Kunsthistorisches Museum in Vienna. I'm sorry, I know I've mispronounced that. It's approximately 120 by 100 centimeters in size, so it's a pretty good size. And many art historians think of it as an allegory of painting, hence why one of its alternative titles is the allegory of painting. Its composition and iconography make it the most complex Vermeer work of all. This canvas depicts an artist painting a woman dressed in blue, posing as a model in his studio. The subject is standing by a window and a large map of the Low Countries hangs on the wall behind. This illu illusionistic, my goodness, some of these words, whew, this illusionistic, I'm not going to be able to pronounce that, illusion, illusionistic, that must be how you say it. This illusionistic painting is one of Vermeer's most famous. Now, according to Albert Blankert, who's a Dutch art historian, he says, and this is in quotes, no other painting so flawlessly integrates naturalistic technique, brightly illuminated space, and a complexly integrated composition. The final painting in this section of the puzzle is La Scapigliata. La Scapigliata, which in Italian means the lady with disheveled hair. It's actually an unfinished painting generally attributed to the Italian High Renaissance artist Leonardo da Vinci, and it's dated circa 1506 to 1508. It's painted in oil, umber, and white lead pigments on a small poplar wood panel. Now its attribution remains controversial with several experts thinking the work actually belongs to a pupil of Leonardo's. The painting has been admired for its captivating beauty, mysterious demeanor, and mastery of smufato. Now smufato is a painting technique for softening the transition between colors, mimicking an area beyond what the human eye is focusing on, or the out of focus plane. It's pretty small in dimension, about 25 by 21 centimeters in size, and it's currently at the Galleria Nazionale di Parma in Italy. Now the painting shows an unidentified woman gazing downward while her hair fills the frame behind her. Many theories regarding the subject have been proposed. That it's a sketch for an uncompleted painting of Saint Anne, maybe a, a study for the London version of the Virgin of the Rocks, or Leonardo's lost painting of Leda and the Swan, or a painting left deliberately unfinished for its aesthetic value. Now the painting was recorded in sale in 1826 from Gaetano Callini's collection to the Galleria Nazionale di Parma, where it currently is, but proof of his existence dates back even as far as 1531, when it may have been owned by Isabel d'Este. Although many studies of Leonardo's works are silent on the issue, most scholars who discuss the painting regard it as an autographic work by Leonardo da Vinci, and it has been listed as such in man many various major Leonardo exhibitions. 19 hours and 34 minutes. That's how long it took to complete bag number 10, section 12. Definitely a hard section, the hardest section so far. And of those 19 hours and 34 minutes, the last eight and a half hours 
all background pieces, including like the ones with design. I tried, I tried. After a while, everything just looked the same. I had to walk away and come back. And, and I knew some lighter pieces went up top. I knew some pieces that had background details should go only in certain places. I couldn't figure it out. So did you notice what I did? Hmm? Did you pick it up? I went and grabbed a completed section, a library bookshelf section, and I slid it underneath the puzzle. Why? Because I know they're all cut from the same pattern. See, my husband has a saying. He said to me, there's no right way or wrong way to puzzle, but there are smarter ways. And I think I saved myself two, three, four hours perhaps, because by sliding that other puzzle underneath, I really was down to maybe about 300, 350 um, background pieces remaining, and they, they just all looked the same. So by putting that puzzle underneath, I could quickly at least find the places for the one prong, the two prong, and the three prong pieces. There weren't that many of those. And then it did help me figure out the other pieces because I had a bit more information. See, I grabbed a piece that was already in the puzzle and I tried to find a piece that connected with it and I could see what piece I was looking for. So if it had characteristics like the prong curved significantly one way or another, it just helped me to go a bit quicker. I still had to go through a lot of pieces and then at times it was like a light bulb went off. And I was like, oh, that goes here, 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 here. And I was like, oh, wow, look at that. I did quite well, you know, but whoo. So yes, I did, similarly to how I did the pink crypt and the silver crypt, I built the silver crypt puzzle from Ravensburger on top of the pink one. I did that here and it did help me. Really at that point, I mean, I didn't want to spend too many hours looking at beige pieces. I do think it saved me a bit of time, but it still took quite a lot of effort and work to do. However, I absolutely love this section of the puzzle. It's beautiful. I love the blues and I love how different this picture is. It's amazing. I love this one, whether or not it's from Da Vinci or one of his pupils. Beautiful. I love the frame. So lovely. Even though this is by far the hardest section, the one that took the longest, love it. It is gorgeous. I can't get enough of this section. And I will say that if I cannot find a permanent location to fully display the full jigsaw puzzle long term, I'm going to pick out my favorite panels and put them up. And I think this will be definitely one of them. Now, I talked to Graphica and I asked them about the frames. And they said there are approximately 20 different frames throughout the entirety of the jigsaw puzzle. I don't think I've mentioned this in any of my previous videos. Apologies if I'm repeating myself. Now, the reason why they said approximately 20 is because frames repeat themselves, but they've been slightly altered, maybe stretched or elongated or whatnot. So their dimensions slightly changed or because then if the dimension changed, maybe more or less of the detail is visible. So it's not exactly the same frame, but maybe it is. So they said approximately 20 different frames throughout the 53 fine art pieces that are displayed. So I thought that was really nice. So thanks again to Graphica for always providing such interesting information about this lovely large jigsaw puzzle. I'm now done 10 bags, only 17 more to go. The next section, the one that goes above this is just one large painting. They usually take a bit of time, but I don't think it'll take this much time. Um, wow, I don't know what more to say, but wow, beautiful section, hard, 19 hours, 34 minutes. That's a bit more than my 18 hour prediction that I had. Not sure if you can hear little Thora in the background slurp slopping her water. She might talk to us here soon, or maybe she'll just go lie down in some more sun. Again, I still don't have my map back up on the wall. I'll, I know. I need to get to it, um, but yeah, I really enjoyed it and I hope you enjoyed it as well. Did you notice that I slid the other puzzle underneath? Another reason why I did it 
As the background pieces, I really like this background, this photographer's gray background I'm working on, but these pieces really blend in. So it at least gave me like a variation between the colors of the background and the brown from the bookshelf. I was able to see pieces a lot better. But there you go, another section done, 10 bags down, 17 more to go. We're getting there for the love of puzzles. I hope you enjoy these videos. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Please consider subscribing and until next time, ciao.